If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Before we can determine the magnitude of the net electric field at the point that is midway between these two charges, we want to review a couple of basic concepts related to electric fields. The first concept to remember is that when you have a negative charge, the electric field lines are going to be pointing towards that negative charge. And when you have a positive charge, the electric field lines are going to be pointing away from that positive charge. And we'll see how these two concepts relate to our scenario in just a moment. We also want to remember that the magnitude of the electric field that is produced by point charges, which is what we have in this situation, is equal to a constant times the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance from the charge to our point of interest squared. Let's consider this point that lies midway between the two charges and the electric field that is produced by the negative charge. As we noted, electric fields will be pointing towards negative charges. So that means that the electric field present at this point right here, as a result of that negative charge, will be pointing towards the negative charge. So we can draw an electric field vector that points towards that negative charge. And perhaps we can call that E1. And if we call that E1, we might as well call this charge Q1. Now consider the positive charge, again at the point located midway between the two charges. As we noted, positive charges will produce electric fields that point away from the positive charge. So if we were situated at this point, we would want to draw an electric field that points away from that positive charge. Now away from the positive charge at this point would be pointing towards the left. And we can call this electric field vector E2. And therefore we'll call this charge Q2. We'll notice that both electric fields are pointing in the leftward direction. So to get the overall electric field, we simply have to add these two magnitude of electric fields together. And so we've set up the following equation, that the net electric field will be the sum of the magnitudes of the two electric fields shown in the picture. We're going to be following this equation for each electric field. So for example, for the electric field produced by particle one, we would have K multiplied by the magnitude of Q1 divided by the distance from Q1 to this midpoint squared. We'll talk about that distance in just a moment. And then we're going to be adding the electric field magnitude produced by charge number two. So that would be K times the magnitude of charge two divided by the distance from charge two to the midpoint squared. Now we'll notice that the distance from the negative charge to the midpoint and the distance from the positive charge to the midpoint will be the same distance. So we will use the letter R for both of those distances. In fact, if we want to get a little bit fancy, we can notice that both terms, the blue term and the red term, contain the same quantity k over r squared. So to slightly simplify our calculation, we can factor that out. So that would look like as follows. We would have k over the distance squared, and then we'll put in a big parentheses here. We'll have the magnitude of charge one plus the magnitude of charge two. The only thing that le is left to be determined is the distance r. Again, that's the distance from each charge to the midpoint. And the simplest way to find that distance would be to first find the x-coordinate of this midpoint. So the x-coordinate of that midpoint, which we might call xm, would simply be the sum of these two x-coordinates and then divided by 2. And so if we do that, we'll have 27 divided by 2, which will be 13.5 centimeters. So that's going to be the x-coordinate of the midpoint. And then hopefully we can see that the distance from each charge to that midpoint, which would be this distance right here, is simply going to be the x-coordinate of the midpoint subtracted from the x-coordinate of this negative charge. So if we perform that subtraction, we would get 7.5 centimeters for that distance. So that's this distance r right here that we'll be plugging in. So we're now ready to plug in all the known values. Let's not forget that when we plug in R, we have to use a standard unit of meters. So we would want to change that into meters by multiplying by 10 to the negative 2. And that would produce a value of 0 0.075 meters. 
We know the constant K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, and then we'll plug in the charges that are given in the question. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all the known values. Notice that even though the value of Q1 is negative 2 times 10 to the minus 7th coulombs, we have the absolute value around that quantity, and so that's actually going to change it into a positive 2 times 10 to the minus 7. If you'd like, you can just go ahead and make that positive to avoid any confusion. We could then plug in all of this into our calculator, and when we do that, we get an electric field magnitude of approximately 6.39 times 10 to the power of 5, and then the unit of electric field will be newtons per coulomb. So this would be the correct answer for the magnitude of the net electric field. And if your question happens to ask for the answer in unit vector notation, then we would have a negative 6.39 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per coulomb, and that would be in the i hat direction. The reason that it's negative is because recall that both electric fields were pointing to the left, so that represents the negative x direction, and we choose the i hat notation because the overall electric field is in the x direction. So here is our answer in unit vector form, and here is our answer in magnitude form. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the subscribe button so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.